So it's that time on the channel again, where we take a look ahead to the next month and check out some new releases that are headed to the Steam platform. As always, this is not a comprehensive list by any stretch of the imagination, but rather just a breakdown of 10 titles that look particularly interesting, so if there's anything that I missed, please do let me know in the comments below. But for now, let's just go ahead and kick things off with Cozy Knots dropping on July 1st. So first off, this looks completely adorable and gives you a chance to manage your own space colony where you can explore the unknown, visit various biomes, and just generally do the sort of survival craft you're probably used to if you're a genre fan. The visuals look tasty and it sounds relaxing, so I'm guessing this is going to be a pretty chill experience if you're a fan of these sorts of gameplay loops. There's a demo available now if you want to go ahead and check it out and get a feel for it, and again, it'll be dropping proper next week on July 1st. And the next day on the 2nd, we have a full release of a third-person free-to-play looter shooter, The First Ascendant. And I have to say, this sort of looks like somebody smashed Destiny and Warframe together, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Early footage looks fast and frenetic, but the environments also look a little bit bland and samey for me. But hey, if you've got solid gameplay with a satisfying sense of well-placed progression in place, then it's entirely possible to overcome some less-than-inspired visuals. Plus, the last time I tried to underestimate a third-person online squad-based shooter, I almost missed out on Remnant 2, which is an excellent game, by the way, but... Yeah, I'd say that I'm about a level 1 on the McMahon reaction meme scale for this one, and here's hoping that it's better than the sum of its parts. Next up on July 11th, we've got a new Devolver Digital title dropping that I could not be more excited for, and that is Angerfoot. And good lord, this game just looks amazing to me. It's like the devs were just like, how do we take Hotline Miami, shove it into 3D, and then just make it as loud as humanly possible? Now granted, I'm an absolute sucker for hyper-surrealistic, neon-saturated, ultra-violent nonsense, so this might not be for everybody, but boy howdy, I'm sure gonna have a fun time jumping into this one and I will probably be checking out the demo in very short order. And speaking of first person shooters, next up is a game I wasn't aware of at all, but after seeing their presentation I'm a little bit surprised they haven't gotten a stern talking to from the Square Enix legal team because Evil the Evil sure is smarmy about inverting the Live Alive logo. However, this is not an HD pixel art RPG, but rather a squad based first person shooter where you can play as a vampire and this looks absolutely tasty. Early footage looks fast and exciting, the powers look to be well balanced and satisfying to use, and yeah, I'm really hoping for good things for this one since it looks to cut to the core of what makes shooting in a video game really fun in like a time splitter sort of way. Now I'm not sure if there's going to be a ton of meat on its bones from a story perspective, but we'll see how it develops in the lead up to its launch on July 16th. Next up, and also dropping on the 16th, let's step away from shooting things for a second and take a look at Flock, which looks to be a very chill experience. In Flock, you'll take on the role of a flying shepherd called a bird rider, and in turn tend to various adorable flying creatures like my personal favorite here from the trailer, the hover sheep. It looks like the devs really poured themselves into providing a chill, relaxing experience that you can enjoy with friends, and based on what I've seen so far, I think they're probably going to deliver exactly that. I'm sure if you're a fan of games like Animal Crossing or really any other adorable, mostly non-violent, cozy multiplayer game, that this is probably going to be pretty appealing. Also, I should point out this is coming to Game Pass on July 16th as well, so if you're a subscriber to that service, you could check it out there, or if you want, you can actually download the demo right now if you'd like. Next up, this game looks to be keeping a chill aesthetic, but I'm guessing with some way more aggressive gameplay, and that would be Bo Path of the Teal Lotus releasing the next day on July 17th. Path of the Teal Lotus is a gorgeous hand-drawn action platformer that's inspired by Japanese folklore. And I have to say, this might be one of the prettiest games I've seen in a long time in this particular style. There's no real shortage of games with a hand-drawn aesthetic nowadays, I guess, but every frame of footage I've seen from this game so far just looks like a painting, and this is probably going to be a must-buy for me on day one. And jumping ahead about a week, in case you haven't gotten your fill of slaughtering space bugs over the past several months in Helldivers 2, you'll get a chance to do it in one of the original bug hunting games, Earth Defense Force, because EDF 6 drops on July 25th. And from everything we've seen so far, it's shaping up to be as schlocky and over the top as ever. The marketing is going to look real familiar if you've played Helldivers 2 recently, but make no mistake, Earth Defense Force was paying homage to Starship Troopers for, uh, I think, about 20 years at this point, so yeah, if you're hungry for more of that, I'm sure it'll be able to deliver if you have some primal need to slay a bunch more space bugs and a different IP. Moving on from protecting civilization to actually building it out, Frostpunk 2 is going to be releasing on July 25th. Now, personally, I haven't really been into this type of game since the original, like, I mean, like, the original Sim City or Civilization just way back in the day. Even back then, I wouldn't say I found it to be a particularly thrilling genre, but man, Frostpunk 2's visuals just look so incredibly good from the actual gameplay to just a shockingly clean UI that it's really tempting me to give this genre another chance. Plus, I mean, just look at the detail in these cities. This is just an incredibly good looking game, and everything just looks so dense and lore packed that I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on this one. And hey, maybe if you're like me and you were also kind of lukewarm on this genre, maybe this will be the game that turns you around. 
And speaking of brilliant menus and UI design, but going back to the cozy aesthetic for a moment, Slice of Life Sim The Garden Path releases on July 30th. And looking at the trailers for this game, at first I was a little bit concerned that it was going to be some brutal survival craft game, but the more I've read up on it and checked out some of the gameplay videos, this too looks like it's going to be a pretty chill experience that's probably more in line with Flock. And in fact, it was apparently designed to be enjoyed in short bursts, and well, considering the Steam Deck is just a great fit for those sorts of experiences, I expect this game is going to be a natural fit for it. Activities in the game include growing, trading, fishing, or, and I definitely want to know more about this, making new vegetable friends. I'm sure this will be an absolutely breezy game to pick up and relax with for a few moments, but I might hold off on this one until we get a little bit closer to fall, at least since that usually is when I like to play cozy games the most, but nonetheless, this certainly is shaping up to be a very chill experience. And finally, closing things out is another genre that I've personally always been lukewarm on, but honestly this game just looks so pretty that it might pull me back into it, and that would be Sword of Convalaria hitting Steam on July 31st. Now this is a Final Fantasy Tactics-like, so if you prefer your turn-based RPGs to be even more nuanced, this is probably one to keep an eye on. Not just because it looks like it's going to satisfy the desire for those gameplay loops, but on the visual front, it's also using a new sort of pixel art that they're calling NeoPixel. It uses modern lighting techniques layered on top of pixel art to provide a more artistic interplay between light and shadow. Now I am a little bit iffy on this one just because I think it's going to be free to play, which is kind of a red flag for me because honestly I just don't want to get peppered with a ton of annoying in-game ads or scummy microtransaction practices, you know. So here's hoping they can avoid those trappings when it releases, but there is a demo available right now if you'd like to get a feel for it before the game actually drops proper again on July 31st. All right, and that's it for this one. And I gotta say, a lot of these just look really, really exciting. But hey, what about you? Are there any games that I missed out on or something that you're looking forward to in July? If so, I would love to hear from you below. As for what's coming up soon on the channel, we should have some games to get ready for the 4th of July. The summer sale is starting, well, today actually, so probably gonna look at some pickups from that. And also the fine marketing folks from Victor sent over a pair of their XR Glasses Pro. And while I'm still testing those out, they're pretty promising to say the least. So stay tuned for that. As always, thank you so much for your time. Have a tremendous day and I'll see you on the next one.